the way you thought it would now You thought you heard the call but Did you hear anything at all? You wanted to sing, you wanted to shine You couldn't remember all your lines Now everybody's staring, you're looking around But now the curtain must come down Salutations, uh, I'm okay. Brothers! Let us all unite! You would rather have us keep the internet than have peace in the world. Like, no, I gotta have my, I gotta have my internet. <laughs> Live in front of an internet audience, it is the on Twitter Today Show. Welcome everybody. Welcome back. Hello everyone. I am running with, uh, I'm running on fumes right now with my computer right now, so I apologize if things are a little, a little slow for a while. Um... But, uh, yeah, it's the I'm Clifford Today Show. Welcome, everyone. Um, music by John Bartman, johnbartman.com. Today, we are joined by the one and only Keith Green. His album, For Him Who Has Ears to Hear, it's a classic, classic Christian album. And yes, you guys are correct with the uh, little ad that I had at the beginning there. We, uh, I, I do have a new song that I decided to release. Um, it's not, uh, I, I, I released a single a little while ago called Even in the Wild, but last night, literally today, midnight, I released a new song called Noble Fantasy, and you guys heard a clip of it just before, and it's available on Bandcamp right now, I did that intentionally, you know, not going to release it on, on Spotify until, you know, until the time is right, you know, probably not until the, uh, when the EP is done, and I release the EP, but there's also a music video for it that I made that you guys can check out as well. And so I'm probably going to put a link in the description to that for that. So, um, yeah, it's just this kind of a, a song that means a, a lot to me because it's, it's a very emotional song and it's a very raw song. So uh, appreciate it if you guys checked it out. Um, today we're going to be talking about Semler, and if you guys don't know who Semler is, um, this isn't any really recent news, but it's just something that I feel like needs to be talked about a lot uh, uh, more. So we're going to get into that, but first, um, I wanted to just spend a few minutes talking about the video that I released recently, the, uh, the uh, edited video that I, you know, that I actually worked hard on and didn't just, you know, live stream it. I, I worked on it for months and it's finally out. It is my what is audio feed video, which I guess is kind of a, it's sort of a documentary kind of recap video 
of audio feed and uh, audio feed 2022 specifically. So that's finally out and I'm glad it is. I, I worked on it since uh, July. I think that's when audio feed was, you know, I, I went out there and I, and I worked hard. I, f I filmed everything, you know, it was, a, it was a busy weekend for sure. And I had conversations with so many different people, so many different awesome people. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And then ever since then, I had been working on editing the video. And I don't think I realized how long it was going to be. But it ended up being two hours, which is the longest video that I've edited. Aside from, you know, not counting podcast videos, not even including podwood forecast videos when I used to make YouTube videos for those, those hardly count. But I worked really hard on it and I'm super glad that it's out there. And uh, I just wanted to give my general, I guess, afterthoughts on it first. Before we get into, um, before we get into Semler today, and uh, yeah, so I there were a few comments that I got on it, and so we'll we'll get to that. Um, I don't know. It was just a. It was a video that I'd I'd never. It was a kind of video that I'd never done before. I've done interviews in the past. Me and my friend Mitchell, we used to have a podcast called Talk the Pulse, which was a way to. It was a podcast where we interviewed local artists. So I was somewhat experienced with it, even though it had been a few years, and it kind of felt like getting back into that and it was it was interesting because um you know i had a set list of questions that i wanted to ask people and i don't i hadn't really done an interview in that way usually i just kind of kept it free form and i tried to ke keep it as natural as possible but you know i went in into making the video with with a certain goal and and so I had specific questions that I wanted to ask and I'm super grateful for all the awesome conversations that I had and I really hope that people understand you know that's why I put the disclaimer at the beginning of the video is that you know there are people on the video I mean, everyone has different opinions. Everyone was very different with their, with their answers. And of course, there were people that I definitely agreed with more than others. Welcome, Solid Sloth. Hey, sorry I missed your call earlier. I was getting ready for the show and I couldn't talk. <coughs> but welcome to the stream. <clears throat> And so, yeah, there are definitely people that I agree with more. Turn up the volume. My mic is like up all the way. Is that better? I guess it wasn't up all the way. I lied. Maybe turn your volume up. No, thanks. I appreciate it. Hopefully that's good. It really isn't. I didn't really didn't turn it up much, but it seems like it made a, a bit of a difference. Anyways, yeah, cool. Thanks, man. So there definitely are people that I interviewed with that I definitely do not, did not agree with, you know, on, on many of the things that they said, but that really wasn't the point of the video to like debate anyone I didn't want to paint anyone as like wrong I mean like if people people will have their own opinions anyway people are going to know the people that they disagree with on the video 
And that was kind of more my intention. And, you know, and, and my video isn't, it's, it also is not, it wasn't really a way to, to bash anyone with different uh, beliefs. And it's not, and it's also not a, it wasn't a video that was meant to uh, agree with anyone in particular either. But I will say that I hope what, what came across in the video is that What I hope that came across in the video is that I think audio feed is doing a good thing. I think it's good that they're allowing people with different opinions. I think I think what they're doing is very different and it's a I think it's a neat opportunity. You know, whether the people that founded it are like true Christians or not, they're still allowing people with you know that are pretty hardcore christians to be able to do that and i think that's really cool and i think it's a a great opportunity as many of the people that i talked to said it is a great opportunity for 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 bands and artists who usually wouldn't play together at not because they didn't want to but because of you know just how festivals are festivals that are christian don't tend to don't tend to bring on artists and musicians who aren't Christian and who aren't, you know, um, how would I say, maybe agree with a lot of the things that I do. And uh, secular festivals tend to not, you know, bring on a bunch of Christian artists. Solace Sloth says, can I get your opinion on Rings of Power? I can share that later. <laughs> I actually watched more of the Rings of Power later. But uh, what do I think of Skillet? Uh, I don't like their music. It's not their, not my kind of thing at all. But I feel like I'm one of the few people who doesn't like their music that actually agrees with a lot of the things that John Cooper says. But that's that's neither here nor there. But anyways, so audio the video the audio feed video was just a lot of fun to to put together and it was a fun experience. I don't think I'm ever going to do it again. <laughs> Not for audio feed at least. I, I want to go to audio feed next year and be able to enjoy it. And maybe I'll see something about like bringing the show over there, like a uh, like doing a podcast over there i don't know solid sloth i just chugged a pint of coffee oh that that explains everything i don't know why you would do that but good luck please don't die of a heart attack that uh, it probably feels like the how i did when i accidentally chugged well i didn't chug but i drank a whole uh, Black Rifle coffee energy drink that had like 500 milligrams of caffeine. And I didn't realize it. And uh, I almost died. Anyways, so a few comments on the audio feed video that I wanted to get to. <coughs> uh, that's not the one that I want. There. That's better. So... Uh, Got a comment from Timoratus. Tim Timoratus, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, I think they're a band who discovered my video. I had not heard of them, but I don't know. Maybe you guys want to check it out. I think they are from the Christian Metal Facebook group that I shared the video on. Uh, their first comment was opening with showbread. Good choice. I thought so too. I thought it was a pretty it was a an appropriate video a song to start the video off with you know it's just high energy and i just have a great appreciation for appreciation for showbread so i'm glad someone else does they also commented since the video is so long it'd be nice to have some stamps and uh that's a good point and i did reply to the comment but i did want to say for anyone who has not checked out the video and maybe was intimidated by the length i have now finally added chapters to the video which I need to do that more often, even with my podcast videos, but I'm just super lazy and 
I don't do that enough, but I finally did it. And so I try, I didn't really know at first how to divide up the video into chapters, but then I finally, I, I divided them by intro, uh, day one, day two, day three, day four, and by the, the questions that I asked. So, um, yeah. I uh, also got a comment from Angel Machine. So Angel Machine was actually in the video. They were one of the bands that I interviewed, and they were super awesome. Great conversation. I said, thank you so much for the interview. This is a great documentary of Audio Feed 2022. So thanks, Angel Machine. And if you guys are really into, like, goth, techno, uh, rock, you should definitely check them out. Kind of definitely reminds me of like Depeche Mode, which they said was a inspiration, but maybe a little bit more goth, you know. Um, and the lyrics in their songs are very hard hitting. They're very, you know, anti, um, anti liberalism. Very uh, strong in their faith, you know. And so if you're if you're into that, and you want some music like that that really uh, gets you inspired, then go check out Angel Machine. Uh, I had a great conversation with them. And, you know, watch the video. Watch the audio feed video. And um, <laughs> Solid Sloth, are you, are you sure you're not actually drunk or high? <laughs> Sorry, people watching or listening to the audio have no idea what's going on with the chat, but I'm not even going to try to describe it, you're just going to have to watch the YouTube video. The raptor is about to eat the baby. <laughs> okay. So anyways, um, yeah, audio feed. I don't know if there's much more that I can say. If anyone's watching and has any questions about, about the video or any comments, uh, feel free to, you know, to leave them in the chat. And I'd, I'd like to... I would love to uh, address them, but uh, yeah, I feel like I feel like the video has gotten a good response. I I want to promote it as much as possible because I think I don't know it's one of the hardest that I've ever worked on a video, and so I want more people to watch it. So, Well, Griffin, I cannot, I'm not going to read that comment. You got to watch your language on this chat. Not going to, not going to repeat that. Anyways, so got some more, <clears throat> got a little bit more uh, housekeeping to do. Had a comment on the last stream when we talked about the whole M&M situation. So... Uh, Greg Hopper left a comment and said, it seems like we need to recognize that the deep theology of new believers, especially those emerging from the darkness of the music or film industries, is not going to have perfect theology. We need to be, we need to be supportive as they make the transition, which may take a lifetime. That is very true. Um, so if you guys missed the the live stream from a couple weeks ago, we talked about the whole Eminem situation, uh, doing a, a verse on Kanye West's song and talking about apparently his Christian faith. And, and, you know, I talked about my thoughts on it and how that song is that, that, that recording was actually a couple of years old. And so I, I made the point, I was like, well, have we really seen any fruit from Eminem lately to show whether he actually is a Christian or not? Because that was what was in question. Like, is Eminem a Christian now? Did KJ52's Dear Slim songs finally get to him, you know? And I think Greg makes a great point, and I think we can apply that to a lot of the people. Even a lot of the people we talk about on this channel. Everyone is, like, very young. They're in their 20s or 30s, and... Um, I think it's a good point to make that, you know, a lot of them maybe just don't have it all together and, and that's totally okay. But the difference is, is that they're on this big platform and, 
it's almost kind of like, I don't know, for some reason it makes me think of Justin Bieber, how years ago people really hated him, and uh, some people, a lot of people still do, you know, but, you know, he was in all the news with, like, his all of his behavior and just doing stupid stuff, but kind of, when you think about it, and it's not to excuse his behavior, but when you think about it, it's like, he's a young kid who, you know, has not had a normal life, uh, not had a, a normal upbringing, and so... It just so happens that he's a celebrity and we're seeing all of his mistakes that most people like you and me would probably make, but we probably wouldn't get ostracized for it on the internet, you know? And so that's, I think that's a good point that, uh, you know, we need to have grace and we need to be loving in our correction. And I know, I know that can seem like you know, it's the internet, and so we're going to have hundreds and thousands of people reacting to things, and they're going to, um, and you know what, this also, now that I'm thinking about it, this comment from Greg may also mostly just be referring to, because I talked about the whole Dante, Dante Bo, um, uh, situation, and, you know, Dante Bo made some mistakes, and, yeah, so, which, by the way, apparently, uh, the last update that I saw on the Dante Bo situation was that he deleted his his public statement about the whole thing, so I was like, Oops, what's going on there? So, I think ultimately, and we talked about this with the, um, with the Torrin Wells situation, we need to pray for these people, and, you know, yeah, keep them in our, our prayers, because... I don't think it really does well to, to hate on people and to be like totally, you know, just like, you know, high and mighty. You know, we all make mistakes. And yes, we need to correct each other, but in love. Solid Sloth says, did you know Eminem made a rhyme with orange? Yeah, I heard that one. I forget exactly what he did, but I remember that was like a, a big deal. Even though he didn't really do that, he just like twisted words around to make it sound like orange. That's what I remember. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, that's, uh, that's that with, uh, housekeeping and I want to get into similar, but we're getting into the break time. And so I don't want to like talk about similar for like a minute and then have to go to break. So we might just go to break a little early. I think we're a few minutes early. <laughs> Solid sloth. Can we change the top? top? I, I literally was just going to change the topic. Okay. I think we should talk about important things. Well, you're on the wrong stream. Like rings of power. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll spend five minutes talking about rings of power really quick <laughs> before we go into the conversation uh, uh and before we go into break i'll spend five minutes talking about the rings of power just to f fill in some time so rings of power is is pretty bad i was actually watching uh, a couple more well Sal sloth we've had conversations in private so you already know so you're full of crap I was watching a couple episodes last night. I'm up to episode six, and I know that episode eight recently came out, so I'm sorry I need to catch up. But it is more of like a morbid curiosity. Um, it's really bad, and I think it's really boring. Lord of the Rings are my favorite movies of all time, and I'm reading the books I still need to finish the books, but I've read The Hobbit and I've read The Children of Hurin, oddly enough, <laughs> without having finished The Lord of the Rings. But anyways, I love Lord of the Rings, and I think the new Amazon show is a disgrace. It is boring. It is the... I care about none of the characters, and I hate what they did with Galadriel. Galadriel is so unlikable. And it has nothing to do with her being like female power or whatever. It's just that she is... She's boring. Can you please say Brodo Fraggins like your Samwise? Brodo Fraggins. Brodo. 
Hello, baby. Welcome to the stream. Maybe you can bring some sanity into it. Uh, Griffin's here and he's making me do silly things, but I'm just briefly talking about Rings of Power before I go into break. But anyways, one of the big problems about the Rings of Power is that it is over dramatic and it has like the music is over dramatic. They use slow mo way too much and it's like unearned they the show makes you want to think that certain moments in the show are are important and emotional and i watch it and i'm like i this is not earned at all and it's it's just so bad and it's a lot of the dialogue is is poorly written and just very bad it makes you think that it was written by ai that you know they just fed the the Lord of the Rings script into it, and they're like, "All right, make a show." You know, it's kind of what it feels like, and, and nothing uh, nothing really feels special or important. So, it's uh, it's bad. It, it's not. It, there are some things that are okay about it, but like, it makes me wonder. Like, man, you spent fifty three million on on each episode of this show. And I don't see it at all. And uh, yeah, I'm going to watch the rest of the season, but just it's just out of morbid curiosity and it's just really to to make fun of it. I was watching, I watched a couple episodes last night and there were a couple moments where I laughed out loud. It was really funny, actually. It's there it's some parts of the show that are just very badly made. It's just poor direction and poor filmmaking. I'm sorry, you're getting... You're getting texts on from text noises from my Griffin is taking screen recordings of me and posting it to our group chat. Um, anyways, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. A lot of the choreography is pretty bad too. Uh, it's apparently it's the same fight choreographer from the Hobbit and from the new Mulan movie. So if that doesn't tell you anything, I don't know what. And it's um, it just looks bad, and it looks too choreographed, and it doesn't feel real, as opposed to you know the original one. <laughs> Solid slot. This is the best episode you've ever done. Well, thank you. Maybe I should just turn this channel into a Lord of the Rings channel. Um, yeah, and because the, the I watched the sixth episode, and apparently. At the time, it was the highest rated episode, and I don't understand because, well, the only reason why it is that way is because there's more battles in it, but the battles are so poorly directed. The camera doesn't know what to do during those moments, and the music is really bad. Um, no, Lisa, I'm not doing the R2-D2 scream. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin my voice again. <clears throat> so... Yeah, the only reason I've been watching it this far is is one, me and Mitchell are going to talk about it on Podwood Forecast. <clears throat> but I don't think even he's going to finish it. And two is because a guy, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, YMS, has been doing watch alongs with it. So he he likes we you just sync up the time with him and you watch the show along with him. You know, he obviously doesn't play the show because uh, he'll get copyright stricken. But it's just funny to it's fun to watch the show with him and his friend Gael and hear them make fun of it. And it makes it a lot more bearable. But yeah, Salah Sloth says it's time to wake up America. The I'm Clifford Today show is the only objective news source in this country. A freaking men even though i was not talking about news just now just my opinion on a show but yeah wake up america wake the up america in the words of samuel l jackson all right i think that's all i'm really going to say on on the matter right now this is just a random thing but you know we had a few minutes i did not want to get into the main topic before we got into the break but, uh, all right, Solid Sloth, you have one more question. What is it? What do I do on my break? 
Most of the time, I actually don't really do anything. I just kind of sit and wait. But sometimes, um, if I have to go to the bathroom, I'll go to the bathroom. Sometimes I don't have any water, and so I'll just go and quick refill that. But if I don't really have anything to do, I'll just uh, I'll just let the loop play, like once or twice, and then we'll get back into it. But the I mean the reason why I do the break is because for the audio version, we it needs a an ad break, you know, to put in ads. I know we don't do anything on YouTube here, but for the audio version, it's uh, important. You're going to FaceTime me on break? Okay, well, keep it short. All right, anyways, sorry, this episode is uh, apparently pretty chaotic, but don't go away. We're going to talk about similar when we get back. And uh, yeah, we'll be right back after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. back i mean why keep everyone waiting yeah we'll just bring it back i would like to also i would like to say that uh solid sloth did not facetime me during the break so you lied to me i can't believe you'd lie to me man <coughs> but now it's too late if you were gonna do it <laughs> that was a really short break but you know why waste any more time? I want to get into the main topic for today. So, not sure how many of you guys will actually know who Semler is. But Semler made headlines last year. Here's, here's the thing. I had no idea that this person existed until like a couple months ago, thanks to a YouTube channel called Brylan and Lisa, uh, Brylan over there he he covers a lot of more a lot of hot topics concerning uh, Christ, the Christian music industry and such. And he has some good videos, and he brought this to my attention. I was just I was I was surprised that I was not familiar with this person and what has been going on, but. And by the way, we're going to get into some spicy, some spicy dicey discussion, some controversial discussion that is going to make some people uncomfortable. So just giving you guys a fair warning, giving you guys a trigger warning. So Semler is a musician, is an artist. Uh, her name is actually, what's her full name again? 
She goes by her middle name, but it's uh, Grace. Grace Semler. Semler is her middle name, but uh, I'm trying to find in my notes where I had her full name. Grace Semler something. Grace Semler something. Grace Semler Baldridge, but she just goes by Semler. And she is, you know, her style is more folk, Americana, indie kind of style. She is a, she is a self-identified, you know, she, she is a lesbian. She is, well, she calls herself queer. And she also calls herself a Christian and calls herself a Christian artist. Now, we've, I've talked about this topic before. We talked about Nicole Serrano a couple months ago. And so you guys basically know my thoughts on that whole situation. Uh, that's not really what we're going to talk about. I mean, we'll, we'll briefly talk about like the problem with that, but mostly we're going to talk about the, the Christian music industry's response to her music and her lifestyle and the waves that she's been making because last year, apparently, because I, I wasn't paying attention to the Christian charts, she was the first Christian, a uh, queer Christian artist to make it to number one on the Christian charts. So it's a big deal. Solid sloth. Do you, do you wear pants on stream or pajamas or commando? Well, definitely pants because don't want to risk anything on, on live stream. I don't want to be a part of the, one of those compilation fails but i guess if i wore pajamas that wouldn't be too bad but i don't really wear pajamas i i just wear pajama shorts sort of anyways that's not what we're talking about stay on topic <laughs> um so so yeah it was a pretty big deal last year but i i didn't hear anything about it i don't i don't know how but uh but yeah similar is a thing <laughs> And uh, she's an interesting individual. And I also wanted to, I want to preface this whole conversation. You know, I, I want to, I want us to, I want us to pray for all these individuals that we're going to talk about. I think we need to uh, keep similar in our prayers as well. And I want all the things that I say today to be in love. And that doesn't always mean the kind of love that anyone expects. You know, sometimes we got to get a little tough love. But anyways, so she's been active with her music for a few years. She grew up a Christian and at some point she realized that she was she realized that she was gay. Solid Sloth says, "I'm going to get the lads on this and we're about to have a hostile takeover of the stream." Well, you know, I I need to get through this topic, so I'm going to try to just ignore all that. <laughs> You're being very rude and interrupting, uh, but it's okay. It's you. Anyone is welcome to talk in the chat. Anyways, so Semler, been active for a few years, and uh, yeah, and she's been she's a very active activist. She's very outspoken about the contemporary Christian music embracing. Christian artists of the LGBTQ plus community. And, you know, that's, she's basically made it her main goal. And um, just to get an idea of what she's like, I've chosen one of her songs. And I'm going to read the lyrics to you. I, you know, I'm sorry I can't play the whole, I can't play the song because I'm going to get copyright stricken. But, anyways, either way, it's a very vulgar, vulgar song, <laughs> so it's just littered with, you know, naughty words, and so I'm just I'm gonna censor it myself. So she has a friend. Uh, she has a friend. She has a song called "You're Not My Friend," 
And uh, you can probably take a wild guess as to who the song is addressed to. So I'm going to read it. I'm going to read this Ben Shapiro style because some of the lyrics just seem very like rap like sort of. So I'm going to seem very lame and uncool by just quoting these lyrics. But anyways, verse one goes, check tape. You used a natural disaster just so you could go and ruin my day. She might be talking about AIDS, but yeah. F sake. Like if I'm really such a heathen, why can't you just stay the hell out my way? Oh, I pray that Jesus Christ is revealed to you one day. You'd say the same and text me back with ice inside your veins. I'm burning up. Thank God I know this BS isn't love. Because you're not, this is the pre chorus. You're not my friend, and I think you effing know it. You're embarrassed, and it's showing. Yeah, you talk your S in private. I go public. You don't like it. It's really amazing songwriting here. I don't know if this is a, a good example of what her actual songwriting is like, but it's not impressive. Not because, not even just because it's offensive. It's just. <coughs> I just think it's bad songwriting. The chorus goes, God is amazing and your church is crazy. F off to your worldview and scary bad values. Verse 2, good grief. I'm thrilled that you can't stand the sight of me. Rent free. You've turned me into someone so petty. So how's it taste? This humble pie I worked all night to bake. Okay. And it goes back to the pre-chorus and the chorus. And then we go into the bridge. I'm going to tell the Blue Hill Country Club that you don't think love is love. You said not to say it. What's wrong? What's wrong? Scared to claim it and you won't have to pretend. And it goes back in the pre-chorus and the chorus and the outro. And I think you effing know it. You're embarrassed and it's showing. Yeah, you talk your S in private. I go public. You don't like it. And I think you effing know it. You're embarrassed and it's showing. So. So, yeah. Um, uh, seems like a, a lovely person that would definitely want to have a conversation with me. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's just a taste of what Semler is like and her attitude towards Christians like me who don't affirm her lifestyle. And she's been very outspoken about it in interviews and everything. And so... I, we're just going to read some some articles and get to learn more about her. But we're also going to learn about what other other people that we have thought were Christian musicians, you know, pretty big names. And we're going to talk about how they've been reacting to this whole thing. Because that's what I really want to talk about that is really concerning to me and gets me a little upset. Um, let's, uh, change the view here. So, uh, that, that's similar right there. This is an article from baptistnews.com. Now I want to say anything that comes across in this article, you know, I think some of these articles I'm going to read are very, seem to be very pro- uh, what she, what her stance is. And so I'm going to say just because I'm reading these articles doesn't mean that I agree with them. So with their album, The Preacher's Kid, Semler was the first openly queer Christian artist to climb to number one album on the Christian music charts just last year. Within the same year, Semler released a second number one album titled Late Bloomer. Excuse me. I'm being gross right now. In an interview with Baptist News Global, Semler explained that growing up, they felt as though the institution of the church was never built to include someone like me, but yet God was still by my side. Hmm. These two contradicting truths led Semler to begin questioning things, which they think is often the case for LGBTQ people of faith. Semler's music, although unconventional within the Christian music industry, is meant to be a form of ministry to believers, especially LGBTQ youth who are struggling with their sexuality through the lens of faith. The artist currently has 80,763 monthly listeners on Spotify. Why would you name that specifically? It's going to change by the time someone reads this. Anyways. 
Even though two of their projects have earned the number one space on Christian music charts in the past year, Semler is still not invited in this year's Dove Awards that are taking place on October 18th. Now, this article is back in uh, s- um, September. Yeah. The Dove Awards honor achievements in Christian and gospel music honor achievements in Christian and gospel music and include categories like Song of the Year, Songwriter of the Year, and Rock Contemporary Album of the Year, all of which are categories Semler could qualify for given for given their recent achievements. Semler has made multiple TikTok videos about this, including one in which they explain that I put myself up for best artist, I was not deemed eligible, whatever, I still want to go as a plus one. Plus one, my life. Your life. Sorry, if you guys aren't familiar with Plus One, they were basically the in sync backstreet boys of Christian music. Although Semler knows there is little to no chance of receiving an award in October, they still believe it is important for queer Christian artists to have representation in the music industry. <clears throat> Being a Plus One, even if they did not win an award, is important because their recent achievements are unique for a Christian artist. In response to a fan's comment on a video of Semler joking about the situation, they state that it does matter because we went to number one twice in a genre that has historically excluded LGBTQ people. At the end of the video, Semler shows a a photo of the suit they would wear, joking that they would that they will look amazing on the red carpet and ending the video by saying, Toby Mac, please bring me as your plus one. Fans on TikTok agree with Semler, tagging Toby Mac, Switchfoot, and Reliant K, three mainstream Christian artists in the comments section of the video to gain their attention. One comment tagging Reliant K, they misspelt Reliant. Well, actually, they didn't. They just spe- misspelt the band name. <laughs> they spelt it the normal way. Reliant K states, your opener deserves this, alluding to the fact that Semler was the opening act for Reliant K's Um Yeah tour earlier this year. So, Reliant K, and this is true, Reliant K, your favorite punk rock, alternative rock band, Christian band growing up in the early 2000s, Made a lot of great Christian rock music. Uh, Even though they were one of those bands that were like, oh, we don't really want to be pigeonholed into the Christian genre or whatever. You know the drill. Last year, they... They invited Semler on as an opening artist for their tour. I, I I was very shocked by that. To hear that. But these days, nothing is really surprising me anymore. It's just really sad because, you know, I always uh, I always enjoyed and appreciated Reliant K. And so this was just kind of disappointing to hear. And I'll, I'll talk about why in a little bit because there's some more artists to talk about. Uh, anyways, we don't, we don't need to read that. CCM industry stays silent on LGBTQ inclusion as queer artists carve inroads. Um, so just kind of goes into the same things about similar. And this article is from religionnews.com. And it has some anonymous quotes from from people who are apparently in the CCM industry. Like this one, uh, the example of Semler going to number one on Apple Music was a moot point here in Nashville especially, said one anonymous 20-year CCM industry veteran who said there is still no possible way for an openly LGBTQ person to succeed in CCM today. I know because I work with the gatekeepers who make the decisions about who is going to play the music, the person said. See, something that you're going to see in these articles that is uh, something common in these articles is they keep saying it's never going to happen. You know, the CCM industry is never going to be, you know, open to artists who are in the LGBTQ community, whatever. It's just so sad that Christians are bigoted and everything. And, And they don't. 
they don't make any mention about the fact that about what the Bible says about homosexuality and all that. It doesn't mention the fact that it it try it seems to be trying to paint it's trying to ignore that fact because when you think about it I, f I feel like if this was just about you know if this these were secular articles about like you know secular well you know it's an oxymoron but secular you know queer members if they if it was that then they would probably be talking about how how homophobic the bible is you know but they're not because they're coming at the angle they're coming from the angle that it's okay to be a gay christian or whatever which is you know it's not true and i don't want to get into a whole spiel about it but like that that's what i believe i believe the bible is very outspoken about it and if you want to argue with me um you know i'm not you know i'm not a really good debater but i will say that mike winger has some really good videos about it who he tackles all the arguments against it of people who want to say that the bible is actually affirming of you know the homosexual lifestyle and all of that not true but mike winger has some really good videos on it cuz i'm not going to i'm not going to take the time to get into it right now so basically that's what these articles are all saying and what Semler is saying is like, oh, it's so, so sad because, you know, it's actually okay to be to, for all that. So that's the annoying thing about these articles. But anyways, fellow artists, too, are shy about going on the record about LGBTQ inclusion. RNS reached out to uh, Rel uh, Religion News reached out to 10 Christian chart toppers and none responded to invitations to clarify their stance. Quote, the worst part is that they are willing to tuck their tail between their legs and be silent and feel shame about it, said Trey Pearson, who came out as gay in 2016. Because whether you are a Christian, a Christian music rock star or a music leader of a church, you know your career and your community is over the minute you are honest and vulnerable. Uh, that's only if you're going to come out as affirming of, of the homosexual lifestyle. That's the only reason. Uh, Chris Hauser, a CCM industry veteran with a background in radio, pointed out that radio program directors are often compelled by their employers to maintain traditional pr Christian perspectives on the air, even if they don't do it out of personal belief. There are many Christian radio PDs who are affirming, who have gay people in their families, but they are also acting in accordance with the company they they work for. Oh, objection tech. Crazy. Thanks for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Um Anyways, uh Semler said that the industry, I have no idea who Chris Hauser is. I've never heard of him, but I guess he's uh popular on the radio. Semler said that the industry doesn't oppose LGBTQ artists as much as it pre pretends they don't exist. They've done a really good job at just ignoring us. There's nothing I there's nothing I can do to get these guys to say the words LGBTQ+, they said, referring to the radio powerhouse K-Love. I don't know. She Semler seems really obsessed with having people say certain things. And we're gonna read. Uh, we're gonna f see later that she really wants certain artists to say, um, you know, they they want to say the words LGBTQ plus, and they want to be like, they really want to hear them say it, and it's just very, you know, I don't know. A CCM music in director confirmed that he experiences pressure from donors, listeners, and top executives to avoid mention of LGBTQ inclusion altogether. Yet he knows many, himself included, who believe the silence needs to end. A lot, He says, a lot of us are more passionate about finding more ways for inclusion, and we speak about it privately quite a bit, he said. There are definitely days when I question, am I part of the problem, he added. But the goal and hope is maybe we can slowly break down walls and boundaries and be part of the solution long term. Most at risk are, uh, most at risk are the artists themselves who rely on income from merchandise, album sales, and numbers of streams, not to mention concert ticket sales on a tour where churches are the venues. 
Pearson's band, Everyday Sunday, sold hundreds of thousands of records and penned chart-topping singles, but after he came out in 2016, the group's music was quietly dropped from CCM radio stations. Jennifer Knapp, a singer-songwriter, I, I remember her, actually, and a Dove Award-winning CCM artist, sold more than 1.5 million albums before walking away in 2002, feeling fatigued by the genre's theological boundaries. When she returned to music in 2010, she publicly announced that she is gay. I didn't want anyone to buy a record that they would want to send back because I was gay, said Knapp. But even straight artists who speak out for LGBTQ inclusion can feel a chill on their careers. Singer-songwriter Lauren Daigle drew criticism in 2018 after admitting she didn't know what to make of homosexuality. After Dan Hasseltine, the vocalist for the multi-platinum band Jars of Clay, tweeted a question about gay marriage in 2014, the group's songs were pulled off the air. I remember that, actually, when that happened, and at the time, you know, I was a little, I was a different Christian back then, and I was, I was more like, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with questioning certain things, and it, you know, if you have questions, then that's fine, and you know, I still agree with that, I think it's fine to have questions, but uh, it appears that Dan Hasseltine has since gone from questioning to affirming it <laughs> here's his quote and that i gotta say this is this is really sad also because jars of clay has been my favorite currently working band in christian music you know I, you know of course i love classic newsboys but you know they're no longer a thing Really, I don't like current Newsboys, and so Jars of Clay kind of took their place. I love their songwriting and their musicianship, so it's really upsetting to hear that this is what Dan Hasseltine believes. What many CCM artists probably believe is that every human being has value and worth, and whether or not a person's sexual orientation is the same as theirs, it doesn't change the way we love people. I agree with that. I think that, you know, as Christians, we should show love to everyone. But I think we have some different opinions of what love looks like. Anyways, he continues, they would probably say that in secret, but could never say it out loud. All of a sudden, it changes the fantasy for the audience. That's the addiction for them. They need someone to be morally upstanding so they don't, so they don't have to be. Being dismissed from mainstream CCM, some LGBTQ artists said, liberated the way they said liberated the way they make music uh i'm just gonna skip all this it basically talks about what these artists have been doing since then i guess uh here's an interesting thing uh today more u.s christians than ever are affirming of lgbtq people a 2015 study from pew research found that 54 percent say homosexuality should be accepted. Between 2007 and 2014, Christian denominations as a whole became significantly more accepting of homosexuality. As young people continue to fuel the shift, Pearson believes CCM will have to adapt or die out. Hasseltine hopes Semler will show artists who are afraid to speak out that they that while they might risk losing an audience, there's also an audience to be gained. There is an audience and a group willing to support the art who show up at concerts, create a movement, he said. They just haven't been given the opportunity or invitation to be a fan. Said similar, for the first time in a long time, I felt so excited and hopeful about what faith could look like and, what a, and about what a community of people who love Jesus could look like. There's more, there's more. So we got Reliant K and we got Jars of Clay. Well, at least Dan Hasseltine, at least. I mean, it barely even counts because Jars of Clay isn't doing anything like outside of stupid Christmas shows. I'm sorry. I'm tired of the Christmas shows that they're doing. I, j I wanted them to come back for some real, to make some real music. And I'm tired of that. Anyways, uh, here's another article from out.com. There's a paragraph in here that talks about the people that have been supportive of Semler and her lifestyle, and it's probably not surprising. 
Uh, there are some in the industry who have reached out, including Jennifer Knapp, a former CCM artist who came out as a lesbian in 2010. She's been so kind and supportive, Baldridge says. That's similar, if you can't, if you forgot that was her actual name. Another is Kevin Max, not surprising, a former member of legendary Christian rock band DC Talk. Well, rock and hip hop, sort of. She's been most encouraged by Reliant K, one of the few CCM artists who cross over to mainstream success, who are taking her on tour this year. They've been super supportive. It's just beyond, she says. I don't know what that means. It's just beyond. Is that like the new thing that the kids are saying? It's so beyond, man. And I also found this Vice article right here. And why isn't what where'd it go? I thought I had it. I'm not gonna read it, but I just wanted to read this this headline. Christian Rock has demonized LGBTQ people for years. Now it needs them now it needs them to survive. Uh I'm going to talk about that in a minute, what that exactly means. But, so we got Reliant K, we got Dan Hasseltine from Jaws of Clay, we got uh, Kevin Max, you know, no surprise there. Let's add someone else to the list and, you know, drive, drive the nail further in. Switchfoot, John Foreman. This was all this was also very disappointing, but you know at the same time, not that it's not that surprising because Switchfoot they, while I love them, a lot of the songs they talk about is love and it's love this and love that and it's not really the kind of I don't always get the sense that it's a very biblical love and, and you know I'm proven to be right uh, with this article. It see the love that they talked about seemed more like the Beatles version of love. The you know all you need is love. So, anyways, Switchfoot's John Foreman posts video supporting LGBTQ rights and freedoms. This is from Religion News Services. Uh, the Grammy-winning band Switchfoot, known for its Christian-adjacent rock music, released a TikTok video with a positive message toward the LGBTQ community on Friday, September 17th. And this was September of last year. The video comes in response to queer Christian artist Semler, who posted a video last week seeking clarity on the band's stance toward LGBTQ inclusion. So that's what Semler has been doing a lot, is just baiting Christian artists to say something about Christian music. And I just feel like that's a very, very disingenuous and very manipulative. And, you know, now she she has a platform, so she's like forcing people to say something. I do think that people need to say something, but we'll get we'll get into that. Sorry, I keep alluding to what I'm going to talk about in the end. All right, anyways, from John Foreman. Yes, I support your rights and freedoms. I want you to feel loved and supported, said Switchfoot lead singer John Foreman in the video. Love and embrace have always been central to our story and our song. We need our differences. The video has been viewed more than 21,000 times. Semler's video, which includes Switchfoot's response, has been viewed more than 162,500 times. Switchfoot did not immediately respond to requests for comment. In, the, in their response video, Semler expressed cautious excitement about Foreman's statement, but added, I'm interpreting what you said as being affirming. If I'm incorrect in that, then I really hope you would clarify. Because I think for many queer people of faith, the bait and switch of hearing such encouraging words like yours and then finding out that means something else can be heartbreaking. But I don't think that's you. So she's basically talking about Christians who say, oh yeah, of course we love you. Of course you're welcome to come to our church. But that doesn't mean that we're going to affirm your lifestyle. That's not what she wants. She wants you to affirm her lifestyle. She wants you to affirm her sin. I'm sorry, I'm getting... All heated up about it. 
Though Switchfoot has resisted being labeled Christian, their music is teeming with faith references, and hits like Dare You to Move have earned the San Diego-based rock band a strong Christian following over their 20-plus years together. Their 12th studio album, Interabang, was released on August 20th. Semler, whose full name is Grace Semler, Baldridge is openly... Oh, uh, yeah, we already know about her. On Thursday, September 16th, Semler posted a TikTok video announcing their plan to yell gay rights at that night's Switchfoot concert to see how the band would respond. I am a big Switchfoot fan, said Semler in the video. While Switchfoot has always seemed like a really loving and kind band and group of people to me, they've actually never come out and said that they are LGBTQ plus affirming. Semler hoped shouting gay rights at the concert would be an invitation for Switchfoot to clarify their stance on the LGBTQ inclusion. While Semler didn't get the reaction they were looking for at the concert, Foreman did respond to Semler the next day via the, their TikTok account. I'm so glad that you were there last night. In fact, it breaks my heart to think that you would not be accepted, said Foreman. Let me correct that. You and your journey and your story are welcome at a Switchfoot show. Our music has always been for anyone who is open-minded enough to jump into the dialogue. Agnostic, atheist, consumerist, Jewish, Muslim, doubters, believers, haters, lovers, LGBTQ+, and everyone else who is brave enough to look for meaning, Foreman continued. No one else is an expert on someone else's experience, he added. <sighs> It was very surreal, Semler told RNS. I just can't emphasize enough how meaningful it has been to so many people for John and Switchfoot to clarify their position and just be so loving in this response. Semler said Switchfoot is one of their most significant musical influences and that hearing John Foreman stand up for LGBTQ rights, I'm getting really good at saying that really fast, when they were a teenager would have been life-changing. Uh, anyways, it's just more of the same, same old thing. And so we got Switchfoot, Reliant K, Kevin Max, Jars of Clay, all joining in on this movement in support of, of homosexuality and everything going along with that train and, I wanted to share a scripture. I can sh I could share all the scriptures in the Bible that talk against homosexuality and all of that. Everyone's heard it all before. And like I said, for anyone who disagrees with whether those scriptures are accurate or not or whether they actually mean what they say or we're, we're interpreting them wrong, Mike Winger has a, a great series of videos that go out that they're um what is my where's my train of thought great videos that speak out against those things and, and debunks them pretty well so yeah anyways but i'm going to share this scripture from isaiah chapter 5 this little passage here woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of falsehood who draw sin as with cart ropes who say, let him be quick, let him speed his work, that we may see it. Let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near, and let it come, that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil, who put darkness for light, and light for darkness, who put bitter for su sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and shrewd in their own sight. I wanted to share that because it seems that the church and Christianity is starting to not care anymore. Either one of two things is happening concerning all these Christians who are, well, Christians, sorry, I was going to try, Christians, you know, uh, you know, their salvation is between them and God, but like, if you are calling evil good and good evil, then there's a problem. And either one of two things is happening is either 
you for some reason don't agree with this with the interpretation of scripture that the bible says that homosexuality is a sin or you just don't care but you you don't believe in the inerrancy of scripture and that's a problem in itself and that's that's a that is a core belief in in christianity and if you don't believe those things then then there's a problem and and you're in trouble and i want to correct you in love and i and i pray for you all and i want you all to to come back to the foundation that is god's word and what it truly says but this is just a sign of the times you know people who want to sin are going to justify their sin and they're going to use it by using you know society doesn't view homosexuality and all of that as a sin and so now a lot of these people are being they're being influenced by the world and i want to bring go back to that that vice article it said christian rock music has been uh openly demonizing lgbtq people for years now it needs them to survive there's a little bit of truth to that sadly because the christian music industry today has become all about money and all about being trendy and its existence its existence is dependent on being trendy and have you know being popular and it's become so concerned with that that now that that article is true is that it's going to need to adapt to survive and i will agree <laughs> with something I will agree with these people with Semler and everyone else on the fact that every that people have been silent on this issue. I agree. I just feel like that they've been silent in the wrong way lately. I mean, really, who else other than like John Cooper has been outspoken against LGBTQ plus issues and, you know, progressive ideologies and such who else in the christian music industry everyone's all been all about like love and acceptance and and yes i agree that you know we do need to be loving to these people in a way that's like you know doesn't turn people off from the gospel meaning like well take that with a grain of salt the gospel is going to be offensive to a lot of people so what i mean is like don't we're not supposed to be jerks to people. But I guess I guess that's subjective as well, like what being a jerk is called. Like me just saying that homosexuality is a sin, people are going to say that I'm a jerk. So I guess what I mean is to to be kind to people and to be What's the cordial in our in our conversation, you know, and let people know it's like it's not you. I'm not offended by your existence as much as Semler may want to say that that's the case. <clears throat> Semler, I am not offended by your existence. Technically, I'm not really offended by anything. It is your sin that's the problem. I mean, we all sin, we all fall short, and we need God's grace. I'm not perfect. It's God's grace that makes me perfect. I mean, well, yeah, that makes me worthy of salvation. It's not by anything that I do, and I still make mistakes. And I'm sure you've heard this all before. You've heard all these things and you, I guess you've just chosen to ignore them. But 
I'm not offended by your existence. I just want to see you come to Christ and I don't want you to perish for your sin. And now I used to, when I was a younger Christian, when I was a younger Christian, I used to think, well, you know, if they say that they believe in God, and you know, and they say that they're a Christian, what's the, what's the big deal, you know, if they're gay or not, you know? I mean, you know, I still believe that homosexuality was a sin, but I figured, you know, like, well, if they believe in Jesus, so what if they don't think that their sin is sin? And, you know, I, but then, you know, I came to know those scriptures, like in Isaiah, you know, woe to those who call evil good and go, good evil. And I learned a lot more about the, of how God's grace works when it comes to salvation you need to be fully surrendered to Christ. Your sin needs to be surrendered to Christ. And that's that's the first step of salvation is realizing the sin in your life. But if you're going to be going around living your life and saying that like, oh, that's not sin. That's totally okay. Then you're you're living a lie and you are not surrendered to Christ you still have a desire to sin. And that's the problem there. And that's the problem that I have with all these people who are coming out in in support of this. They are leading Christians astray. And I pray for John Foreman. I pray for Dan Hasseltine and Kevin Max and you know Matt Thiessen and all of them in, in uh, Reliant K. I want them to realize you know, the error of their ways. And I want th- them to come back to, you know, sola scriptura and all that jazz. And it's just super, super discouraging, especially since, I mean, maybe it's inevitable. I do believe that, you know, this, this is just, we're just an arise of, you know, of this movement of people affirming sin and calling it good. And I think that the Christian music industry is in bad shape when it comes to this. We have people who are more on the outskirts of of Christian music, some of them more mainstream than others, who are coming out in support of LGBTQ+. The more the church and the CCM industry is silent on these issues, the harder it's going to be for them to not embrace artists of that community because they've decided to be silent on this. And the more silent they are, the more pressure they're going to get from people. And apparently, according to these articles, there's already people, you know, in the behind the scenes who are secretly affirming of homosexuality. And so I think it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And, you know, as long as Chris, as the CCM industry cares so much about clicks and streams and views and money the the more harder it's going to be to um to be against these things to come out as against these and i think there's going to be i predict that there's going to be a split and the christian music industry is going to be oversaturated with all this and you may have some artists who are going to be like no i i don't believe in all this i don't want to be silent on this and they're going to be ostracized and they're going to be kicked off of record labels they're going to be kicked off of the christian record labels like sparrow records and all that that's what's going to happen and um but i believe that we can prevent this as long as we don't as we as long as we stop caring so much about what the world thinks about us i think the ccm industry thinks it cares too much that's why it's so it's so shallow and unchallenging and the more that christian music is unchallenging the more it's just going to be like a like a you know just bending in the breeze you know and bending under pressure that's what uh Simon Peter, that's what that's what his name originally meant, Simon, like a reed blowing in the wind. And then God changed his name to Peter, which means rock. 
CCM needs to become the rock now. Because, I mean, and, and the church as well. The church is in bad shape. But CCM is basically, it's kind of the voice of the church. When it, with, with its music and everything. And I feel like if, if, if the CCM industry can change for the good, we'll start to see a lot of positive effects on it. So, so yeah, I just want to reiterate, you know, John Foreman, Reliant K, Dan Hasseltine, Kevin Max, and Semler. You know, I love you all, and I want you all to come back to, you know, having reverence for God's word and what he says. And, you know, I love you all. And I have a, you know, all of your music I, I really appreciate. Except when it's blasphemous. But your your artistry, all of you guys, I've always appreciated. Not similar. I haven't really listened to a lot of Semler's music personally. But anyways, that's what I hope. It's just a, it's a frustrating situation. But I'm trying to show love and patience. But, like, we need to show some tough love, guys. I truly believe that. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this whole situation. Uh, and uh, let's not be hateful in our speech, but, you know, loving and, uh, you know, positive, uh, constructive comments, you know. Yeah, just let me know what you guys think. We'll talk about it in the next episode. But I think that's all that I got on that topic. It's just something that I think that we needed to address. Because, I, like I said, I personally didn't know about it. And that just goes to show you how silent the CCM industry is on. It is about this. And so we need to talk about it more because it's becoming a problem. It's becoming... It's They're becoming... Um, you know, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. It's the elephant in the room, and it's just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Soon enough, there's not going to be enough room for us. Anyways, that's all I got to say on the similar situation. I don't know what we're going to talk about next time, but, you know, we'll get to that. But now it is time for my humble opinion, as if you didn't get enough of it already in this, <laughs> this episode. But we're talking about my humble opinion concerning music. We're going to actually talk about music right now. And I got a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. There was a lot that came out in the past few weeks, a lot of singles. Um, but I haven't gotten around to all of it. Worship Initiative came out with another new album, so we'll see if I review that. But this week, I'm going to talk about Shadowlands. is a new, It's a new super group of three three musicians. One of them I know. I didn't really. I'm not really familiar with the other two. But anyways, Shadowlands it consists of Sandra McCracken which you guys, I've talked about Sandra McCracken before. I'm a big fan of her music. And Luke Laird and Brett Taylor. I'm not really familiar with what they do, but they teamed up together and they made this group and they made this album called November Songs. And it is, it's, it's, it's an album, but it's, it's more, I mean, I guess it's an EP because it's only got six songs. So yeah, an EP. It's only 20 minutes. But they got together and they made some songs and uh, it's really good stuff. It's like a very, very worshipful and devotional kind of music. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's still pretty personal with uh, a lot of the things that the, the songs are written about. And uh, yeah, it's like it's just good, like folk music folk singer songwriter and uh yeah it's i enjoy it it's it's a lot better than the previous sandra mccracken's previous 
Endeavor, I, I wasn't like a huge fan of, but it's okay. But like, these are all new songs. Um, and I guess I'll have to say my favorite songs are Saving Me, Quiet Mind, and uh, Hear You, which very much reminded me of like Keith Green with uh, the desperateness of the way that song sounded. But uh, yeah, if you're looking for some good music to, to play, you know, in your devotional time or just like while you're driving in the, I mean, it's, it's just a good album. Check out November songs by Shadowlands. And, uh, I hope that they make some, some more music. And, uh, next we got, we got a new single from half alive along with a, I believe it is a, an album announcement that'll be coming out in December, so I'm really excited about that. But uh, this song is "Did I Make You Up," and it's it's a really good song. I'm a big fan of Half Alive, and um, the song is no exception at all. Good elements of of hip hop and indie rock pop, you know, just you know, good standard Half Alive and. Uh, I like how the song it, it basically is addressing, uh, you know, talking about being in a relationship and kind of finding out that the person, your significant other might not be the person that you thought they were. And so it's like how, how to deal with that and the emotions with that. And uh, yeah, it's just an all around good jam. And uh, I say check it out. And I, I'm really excited for the new album and uh yeah that's basically all i got i had a really busy couple of weeks and so there wasn't a whole lot that i could really review but anyways that's all for my humble my humble opinion and uh i think i think we're gonna call it good just want to remind everyone to check out the the new audio feed video and uh, also the new Sherwood Forest song. Go check that out. And uh, yeah, I don't know what we're going to talk about next time. There were a lot of things that happened. There was the new, there's like the whole situation with Kirk Franklin. Uh, I don't know if I really have an opinion long enough with the, with the rap that he did that's caused controversy. I think it's kind of a silly situation, but we'll we'll, we'll see if I talk about it. I think I just need a break, you know, <laughs> but anyways, uh, I guess we'll talk about what I talk about and, uh, be sure to, ch uh, to tune in tomorrow for another stronghold stream. Really excited to get back into that. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just, uh, let's just end the episode. So, yeah, thanks for checking out the I'm Clifford Today show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure to leave a rating and review, and we'll give you a shout-out on the show. Be sure to check out my other podcast, the Podwood Forecast, with, that I do with my friend Mitchell. We just recorded a new episode, and uh, we talked about a couple of albums. We talked about... The Black Parade by My Chemical Romance and One Wing by The Chariot. So stay in tune for that. I think it's a really good episode. It'll be out soon. Also, be sure to like and subscribe if you uh, liked what you witnessed on this episode today. It's a good way to support me. <coughs> also, buy some merch. I have some shirts. Link in the description. Uh, yeah, and uh, patreon.com slash I'm Clifford today if you want to support me that way. Um, you guys have a good weekend, a good week, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.